Hello everyone, let's look at this limit problem here. Um, actually, we are not just looking at one limit problem, we are looking at two. And so this is one of them. So we have e to the 3x and then there was e to the 2x at the bottom. And there was also uh, a x at the bottom that's added to the e to the 2x. And the other one that we are going to look at is the this one. And so, and then you may say, wait, wait a minute, is that the same problem? No, that's actually not the same problem. This time we do have e to the 2x at the top. And if you go back to the uh, the other problem, the other problem is e to the 3x at the top. So they're not the same, right? I actually switched just the e to the 3x and e to the 2x. And we want to see how they're different from each other. And OK, so let's do this first one right here. We are going to use L'Hopital's rule to evaluate this limit. It's really because when you um, when you check when you check the uh, the form of this limit here, it's going to be infinity over infinity. So we can apply L'Hopital's rule to this limit. Uh, why is that? It's really because we have what e to the, um, I think it's not thick enough. So let me just do this. Okay, so we have what? We have e to the, what is that? Three times something and then over. So we are analyzing its form right now. So we have e to the uh, two times something and then plus that something and all that stuff, it's going to be replaced by the infinity. Okay, so what's going on here is that the top, when we have e to the three times infinity, three times infinity is infinity. So what do we get here? We have e to the infinity, which is also going to like really big. So we have infinity, and then at the bottom, as you can see here, we also will get infinity. So that's an indeterminate form. We just have no idea what that is. We cannot draw any conclusion, so we got to do something. OK, so um, <clears throat> let's just try using L'Hopital's rule on to do this, and then we'll see what happens. OK, so first step, we are going to start taking the derivatives of the top and the bottom separately. And I just put the to, on top of the equal sign just to indicate that this step is applying L'Hopital's rule. So we have the limit as x approaching infinity. And we are going to get what? Let's take the derivative of the e to the 3x. That will give us e to the 3x. That will give us the original function. but you also need to multiply the derivative of the inner function, which is the 3x. So that will give us the 3. So we are going to get 3 times e to the 3x. Yeah, so we were applying the chain rule. OK. And then now, what about the denominator? So let's look at the denominator here. Um, so when we def when we differentiate e to the 2x, we are going to get just like the, uh, the top function that we differentiated. We are going to get e to the 2x and then applying the chain rule we are going to multiply by uh the 2 right that's the derivative of this 2x right here so we get that and then what about the x the x is just becoming a 1 when you differentiate that remember don't use quotient rule right here okay so that's that's the form for um, I mean, that's the new limit problem here. We took the derivative of the top, we took the derivative of the bottom, and then now we put it together here. Okay, so uh, we can try to directly substitute the infinity into the x's and see what's going on here. And it turns out that it's not really different from whatever that we have at, as we check the form at the beginning. And so that's, again, that's also infinity over infinity. Yeah, so that's also infinity over infinity. And so that what does that mean? That means we can just apply L'Hopital's rule again and see what's going on. OK, so let's apply it the second time. And so if we are applying it the second time here, then we are going to get what? OK, so let me use a different color to apply it the second time. And so we are going to get x to the um, infinity. And then what do we get at the top? We differentiate this 3 times e to the 3x. And remember that when we differentiate e to the 3x, we are going to get an extra 3, right? So we are going to get another 3 here. 3 times 3, we get the 9. So we are going to get 9e to the 3x. OK. So what about the bottom? The bottom is the same situation. Um, that 2e to the 2x, when you differentiate, you are going to get 4e to the 2x. And then actually, the 1 is gone, right? So we can actually move it all that in here. Uh, actually, the fraction line doesn't need to be that long. And so let me just redraw it to make it nicer. 
Okay, now that looks better. Okay. And then you may say, this is still infinity over infinity when you plug in the infinity into the x's, right? So <clears throat> it feels like L'Hopital's rule is not working. Actually, there was um, once this turn, this extra turn right here is gone, then we can we can do some algebra manipulation. We don't need to apply L'Hopital's rule again because the e functions, the exponential functions, they will never go away when you differentiate. When you just keep differentiating, you are just going to get a number that's bigger and bigger in front of the functions, but you are not going to get anywhere. So right now, what we can do is to use the rules of exponents to combine the two exponential functions together. And if you do that, then what can we do here? So let's do that here. This step is not applying L'Hopital's rule. What I'm doing is that I'm just combining the functions. So what about the nine over four? You just put it here and we have what? We have e to the, now we combine them together. And so, uh, because that's a quotient, so we are going to use the quotient rule for the, for the exponent, for the exponent. So we are going to take the top power minus the bottom power. So that's what we are going to get. 3x minus 2x. Okay. And so from here, let's continue with our um, computation here. So we are going to get the limit as x goes to infinity. Okay, so what do we have here? We have the nine over four, and then we do the calculation. We get e to the, that three x minus two x will just give us the x. Okay, so we just have that. And now we can actually, it's not in indeterminate form anymore. The nine over four is really just a constant. All we need to worry about is just e to the x. And x is approaching infinity, so eventually our final answer will just be infinity as this answer. So the limit does not exist. And it uh, this function right here, it goes to infinity when x is getting arbitrarily large. So that's the answer for this problem. Okay, now let's look at the other one that I when we switch the, the two exponential functions and see what's going on. Okay, so we look at the second one right here, we switch, and the form is still infinity over infinity, so we don't need to, uh, I'm not going to show it again because you have seen the process already. So what I'm going to do right now is just to start applying L'Hopital's rule, just to um, just to see the what's going on, um, how switching the two exponential functions will affect the result. Okay, so let's do it. So first we are going to get the, derivative of the um, top function, which is what, 2e to the 2x. You actually have seen the process, so I'm not going to spend too much time explaining it, like how to take the derivative of that. And then the bottom, as you know, it's going to be 3e to the 3x, and then plus 1. Okay, so as you know from the previous problem, we actually need to apply it the second time, right? This red step right here, it's the second time that we need to do it because we want the extra turn to go away so that we can use the rules of exponents to combine the exponential functions. And so we got to do it one more time. And if we do it one more time right here, then you are going to do it the second time here, L'Hopital's rule, and then we are going to get what? Let's see. Okay, so we are going to get the four e to the two x, and then we are, um, we take the derivative of the bottom, right? So let me just draw the line to be better. Okay, so what about the bottom? The bottom will actually just become nine e to the three um, x. Okay, is that good? Okay, now just like the previous problem, we are going to combine the two exponential functions. And when we do that, we are going to just leave the four over nine in the front. And then we are going to get e to the, now you apply the quotient rule for the, for the exponent. So we are going to take the two x minus three x, right? The top power minus the bottom power. So we are gonna get the, 2x minus 3x here. And what do we get here? We're going to get 4 over 9. And e to the, 
What is that? That's leg of the backs. Leg of the backs. And let's say we don't want to deal with the um, leg of the backs moment. So it will be a good idea to just rewrite it one more time so that it doesn't have the leg of the exponent. And so it turns out that if you write it without leg of the exponent, you got to put the e to the x with the 9, right? So that leg of the x becomes um, just e to the x. And so think about this. Um, it's not in determinate form anymore because the, uh, the top number, the numerator, is just 4. The bottom is going to be approaching infinity because x is approaching infinity. So you are having a form. What is that form? The form right here, it's going to be 4 over infinity. What is that form? That's just imagine that you are taking um, <clears throat> a finite number divided by 1 million, 1 trillion as you just increase the denominator, what happens to, to um, your quotient. Uh, your answer, it's going to be getting smaller and smaller, right? It's getting smaller and smaller to zero, and all those numbers are positive. So what's going on here? You get your answer to be zero. So the limit does exist, but um, compared to the the previous problem, you can see that the limit does not exist. And so what really happened is that this those two limit problems, it they tell us that it... It does matter where you put the exponential functions. And um, you, as you can see here, this 2x and that 3x, the 3x is bigger at the bottom. So um, when the x is approaching infinity, then you are going to get 0 because we have a higher exponent right here. Compared to the first problem where you have a higher exponent at the top and x is approaching infinity, then the limit will actually be getting larger and larger, and, and there is no limit. OK, so, so it's good to see those. Uh, the two results for the two problems that look extremely similar, but they're actually really different from each other. Okay, so we are going to do more problems next time. Thank you for watching.